to eat cooked or not to eat cooked? That is the question that seems to dominate the vegan community today between the raw foodist and the low-fat vegans and raw to fours. Um, and what I think what's at issue here is the debate around the denaturing of cooked food and the toxic byproducts that tend to result from cooking. Um, for example, acrylamide, which is a carcinogen that is produced when cooking foods in certain ways. And I think, you know, for the raw foodists who, who are 100%, this is what they don't want, this is what they tr truly believe to be at issue here, is the denaturing of the food and the um, toxic byproducts that are that are produced through cooking. First of all, I mean the, the de denaturing of food. I I take issue with the raw food. It's, okay, fine. If you are consistently eating fruits that are from the tree without manipulate manipulating those fruits in any way, like blending or juicing. Likewise, your vegetables. If you're eating them in their whole state then I could say, okay, you're, you're pretty much consistent with your argument. But as we know, a lot of raw foods are heavily blend, are, hev are heavily into smoothies and uh, juices. So there's all sorts of denaturing going on or destructuring of our food, uh, regardless of if we're a raw foodist or we're eating cooked food. The other issue now, and this is a, this is a legitimate concern is toxic byproducts that result from cooking such as acrylamide. Now I'm not going to try to get into the, the techni technical explanation of what, acryl uh, what acrylamide is except for that it is a carcinogen. I have left a bunch of information and links below that you can in my description box that you can check out. Um, because if I start trying to get scientific on you, I'm not. I'm going to sound like an idiot because I'm a layperson. Okay, I'm just an everyday Joe, like most of you out there, just trying to figure out what is right here. So, as far as you know, and I, I have done a little bit of research here. I've done my Google searches and checked different sites like the uh, World Health Organization, uh, the European Food Safety Authority. The um, Health Canada, you know, to these are organizations that have done uh, research and are in the process of doing research in here. And the common factor is is that um, with the carcinogen acrylamide, is that there's nothing c conclusive yet with regards to uh, human consumption and, and the safety of, of that carcinogen. Um, what seems to be of consensus, though, is that the acrylamide is produced at high heat. So anything, and um, well, according to the the European Food Safety Authority, that um, temperature where acrylamide starts to get produced is above 150 Celsius or 302 degrees Fahrenheit. So high heated foods produce this toxin, this carcinogen, acrylamide, that could potentially be harmful to humans, but we don't know conclusively if it is, and if it is, at what level of consumption is actually harmful for us that it would be cancer-causing. So, you know, um, again, what do we do with this information as health-conscious individuals? I think there's a common sense application here. Um, you know, first of all, those who practice 100% raw food uh, would say, well, why even, why even test, you know, why even play with cooked food at all if there's even the potential of being some degree of a carcinogen as a result of cooking? And, and if that's your, your main concern, then the carcinogenic effect of cooking, then I would have to say don't eat at all because every food, I mean fruits and vegetables have naturally occurring toxins that 
that happen in, in, in the food that, that's just present in the food to protect the food from um, evasive insects and other whatever is, uh, is out in nature that could threaten the existence of that particular plant or fruit. So, and there's varying deg various degrees of levels of, of toxicity in these vegetables and fruits. And again, I'm getting into an area that is, is out of my league. Just, I'll put that out there. I have links regarding that subject. But my point is, if you're gonna eat 100% raw because you don't want to consume carcinogens or any kind of toxins, then you're, you're deceiving yourself. You shouldn't eat at all, really. I mean, it's unavoidable. If you eat food, you're gonna consume at some point a certain kind of carcinogen or some kind of toxin. So, um, the other argument that you'll get, and it's not an argument, but this is more of a testimonial kind of um, backing up of their argument, so to speak, why 100% raw is the way to go. And what I get from a lot of individuals out there who are very... Um, I don't want to use the word fanatical because I'm not trying. I don't. I'm not, I'm not trying to be judgmental here, but that are very enthusiastic about 100% raw and are convinced that that is the highest order of eating, and they'll they tend to refer back to their own personal testimony on the health benefits from eating 100% raw, and that's why they can never go back to eating cooked food again because they don't want to have those ailments that they experience when eating cooked food. And I don't want to take away from that, those testimonies and, and from those experiences, they are real. But I can also, from my own personal experience, if I was to base f facts on that, then I wouldn't eat raw at all because most of my personal health benefits came from a low fat vegan diet of cooked food. I mean, when I started, the reason why I actually started eating uh, low-fat vegan was because I discovered I had the early stages of diabetes too. I, I was also developing arthritis in my, in my joints, in my elbows. I couldn't even do pull-ups anymore, not because I wasn't strong enough, but because it, it was just too painful. Um, and I, I, have, I was severely overweight as well. And... Uh, and as a result of eating a low-fat vegan cooked diet, I was able to eliminate all of that in a very short period of time. It was no less than miraculous. Even the dietitian that I was working with, who was not a vegan, by the way, she was amazed at the results because she was actually skeptical in the beginning. I was amazed at the results. I didn't expect those kinds of results. Um, and detoxification, you want to talk about detoxing? Boy, when I was started losing the weight, when the fat cells in my body started shrinking and releasing the toxins, it was heavy-duty detoxification. That was all experienced on a low-fat vegan diet of cooked food. So what am I so why am I now eating a hundred percent raw most of the time? Um a part of it was curiosity. I've started this journey. I, I actually like eating 100% raw. I feel great doing this. I believe it's healthy. I, I'm not, there's no dispute about the health benefits of it. But what I'm trying to, to bring here is, is balance to the picture. I would never exclude cooked food. And I believe that it's not all cooked foods that are bad. It's just certain kinds of cooking that is unhealthy that we should avoid. Avoid. So what is a balanced, um, practical approach to this whole argument? I mean, think for yourself critically here before you get caught up into any kind of, of hype on either side of the, of the camp here. Just think of what is practical for you to live a healthy and balanced life where you are right now. And in most cases, for most people, it is a combination of cooked um, plant-based food with raw food. And that's, it's really that simple. Um, but it's the type of cooking. So yeah, you don't, you know, 
let's say you're practicing raw, raw to four, for example. So you you you're eating all this wonderful all these wonderful raw fruits throughout the day, and then at dinner time you have a deep you have something that's deep fried, like French fries, which is one of the foods that has the highest levels of acrylamide. Then I'm saying you know then there's a health concern here if that's what you're eating every day. But if you're eating steamed vegetables, steamed rice, um, hold it just a second here. Just uh, silence that. Uh, if you were eating foods that have been cooked at low heat below that threshold of 302 degrees Fahrenheit, 150 Celsius, then um, I think you're working within a safe zone of cooking. And not only that, the kinds of foods that you're cooking matters as well. Plant-based, highly nutritious foods can be extremely, combined with the raw fruits and vegetables, can make for an extremely healthy diet and, and can result in vibrancy and a lifestyle that is truly um, electrifying. <laughs> I'm running out of words here, what can I say? So, use common sense with regards to cooked food and raw food. Find that right balance for you. It might be raw till four. It may be eating raw three days a week and having cooked on the fourth. It may be, I don't know, f find that balance within yourself. I think what's important here is just as a reminder is to keep the fat levels low and to avoid cooking your foods at high heats. Leave a comment if you, uh, if you have a, an opinion to put in yourself on your view. I, I don't, I mean, I like to hear from all angles here. Um, even if it's d different from what I've just expressed, because again, I'm just, an average Joe trying to figure this out just like everybody else. So if you got something something additional to add to this discussion, I would love to hear from you. Leave it, leave a comment in the uh, below and uh, <sighs> I'm gonna quit right here, okay? Take care.